Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech show. Coming up on this week's show, loads of new MTB tech stuff, including a really cool new bike bag from Douchebags. There's loads of really cool content from you guys and some unbelievably good bike caves. So straight into tech news. And the first thing in the news this week is there's a new bike bag company on the horizon. Now you might have heard of douchebags before. They're the sort of ski based company launched by John Olson, who's a very famous free skier. That was launched back in 2012 and it's a very cool luggage company specializing in backpacks and all the sorts of stuff that you need for going on holiday and that. So the bike bag itself is called the Savage and it's got a few really cool standout features. If you have a look at it on the screen now, what you'll see is it's got really wide space wheels at the back. Now the only other bike bag really that's got that right is the Evoque bag. And what that means is you can wheel it through the airport no problem when you're in a bit of a rush and it's not going to topple over. It's a really stable bag and it will stand up on its own. Now, unlike the Evoque bag, which is just quite a toughened bag and has like a, a solid base on it, this particular bag has a roll cage on the inside. So the Savage is quite unique in that respect. You basically build your bike inside that roll cage there, and then the whole thing is covered over by the bag, which also means it can be taken apart and packed almost completely flat. So it's a really good storage solution if you haven't got much space in your house or in your garage to store something like that. It's a really cool bag, and you might notice as well on the website, the Atherton family are now running douchebags. You're going to start seeing a lot of douchebag stuff coming up on the mountain biking scene. And hopefully we're going to be getting some of those bags in soon. They're especially good for me because as well as being suitable for 26, 27 and 29 inch wheels, they're compatible with long wheelbase bikes. So up to 1300 millimeter wheelbase bikes will fit comfortably inside. So that is, that's basically tailor made for me. So sign me up douchebags, I'll have one of them. Also just announced from douchebags is their new wheel bags, which are, which are coming soon as well, and a new helmet bag. As soon as I've got photos of those, we will be showing you. Now, unfortunately, this bit of news is something I can't show you right now, but if you come back to the GMBN Tech Facebook tomorrow, you will see something brand new from Mondraker. All I'm gonna say is there's a clue on the screen right now. Can't tell you anything else. Now, Brenda Fairclough races for Deity Handlebars, amongst other sponsors, and he's now got his brand new own signature handlebars. 800 millimeters wide, it has 30 mil rise, it has eight degree back sweep and five degree up sweep. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you may have already seen these handlebars in use in the breakless video that was shot with Ollie Wilkins, Blake Samson, and of course, Brendan Fairclough over on GMBN. There's a link to that video below this very video in the comments. So make sure you check it out because you can see him on his bike and you can also see him using them as a marker where he digs them into the ground before he sets off down the hill. They're gonna retail for around $85 and they're gonna be available anytime now. So keep an eye out on the Deity website for those. Now, I wanna just draw your attention to something. It's not necessarily the latest news. It's a 2018 model bike by Sun, and it's called the Kern LT. Now, two bikes we checked out at Sea Otter, the both 29ers with the Kona Operator and the Da Vinci Wilson. They're full carbon bikes, but both of them had aluminum chainstays on there. Now, to me, that does make a lot of sense because downhill bikes get a hell of a lot of abuse, and chainstays are one area in particular that downhill bikes tend to snap. So having that part of the bike easily and cheaply replaceable in comparison to carbon obviously makes a lot of sense. But the Sun is very different. The Sun is actually a full aluminium bike and the only part of this bike is actually the chainstays, which is carbon fiber. So it's a monoblock unit and it's armored, so it has chainstay protection on there and it has protection from the underside to protect it against rock strikes. But Sun, interestingly, are using this because it's a lot stiffer under the sort of pedaling forces and the twisting that you get when you're pushing bikes into hard turns and tackling really aggressive terrain. So I think this is really quite a novel approach. Has any of you guys ridden one? I'd love to know a bit more about the bike. I know it's got 160 mil travel, if, of course it's the Sun, it's going to be a good bike, they've always had really good suspension platforms on them, but I'm really interested to hear what an alloy bike with a carbon chainstay rides like. I think that's pretty cool tech. Now something else I checked out at Sea Otter, but I actually forgot to tell you guys about, was the new Hiplock Z-Lock combo. Now the Z-Lock is one of my favourite things in the world because it's really similar to a cable tie, except you can lock them. So they're ideal to just loop around your bag, keep them in your back pocket when you go riding, that sort of thing. And they're ideal for like coffee shops or any sort of short stops you want to do, just enough to sort of give you peace of mind that your bike will be a bit safer than without a lock on there. 
Now, they're really good and they're still available, but they do involve having that little key, which means you have to put that somewhere. Now, the combo one gets rid of that. Now, the lock itself is a little bit bigger. It's more like the size of two Z locks, and it's got a three digit combo on there that you can customize to your personal number. It's a really cool bit of kit, whether you're using it as a day to day lock for just safer areas, or maybe locking your bike on the boot rack or the roof rack of your car. Really cool bit of kit. They're about 20 quid and they're available right now. So next up is something from Atomic. Of course, Atomic being that company that make carbon fiber rims. They have a brand new downhill rim just about to come out. It's a 35 mil external, 28 mil internal rim width, available in 27 half and 29. Of course, it's carbon fiber. But the thing that's really different about this particular rim is it has a foam core. So the void space on the inside of the rim is full of a specific type of foam that does not absorb moisture. Now that is manufactured into the rim when the rim is molded. The whole point of this is that it absorbs vibration out on the trail, so you don't get such a harsh feeling on the rim. And of course, it has a slight damping effect as well. That sounds like a really cool product, and we'd love to have a closer look at those. A couple other little points about them, they've got a hookless design, so the sidewalls are a bit thicker, and it makes the rim a lot stronger than traditional hooked style rims. Very cool that, and we're gonna start seeing that technology, I think, transfer over into the world of Enduro very soon. Now, talking of rims and protection, there's a brand new rim protector from Spin Shield, which is being championed by Loris Vergier and Nicolas Vule, amongst other riders. Now, this particular Inza is a little different to the other ones on the market. So it fits in the same sort of way. It sandwiches against the rim, so it helps protect the rim itself from rock damage. And it also protects the sidewalls of tires from tearing when they get pinched when you bottom out against those rocks. But it also has these little wings, if you just look on the screen there. And the job of those is to actually increase the stability of the sidewall of the tire, which means at lower pressures, you're gonna get more stability and it's not gonna squirm around as much. Now they weigh about 215 grams for the 27 and a half inch size, and it goes up to 260 grams for the 29 inch size and they do not absorb any sealant as well, so you don't have to put extra tire sealant in there. Now they're available in 27 and a half and 29 inch and four different orientations to suit rim widths from 25 to 28 mil, 30 to 33, 35 to 38, and 40 to 43 millimeters. And it's absolutely crucial that they're in the correct size for the rim, regardless of tire size. It's all about the rim size to give you that protection. They look really cool. I think we're probably gonna do something on tire inserts and puncture protection soon, because it's such a topic at the moment, because it's one of the only things on a bike that really does stop your riding or hamper your riding. Snapping chains and getting punctures. There's still problems we seem to have, despite all of this amazing tech we have on bikes. So, more coming up on that soon. So we haven't included reader comments in the show for the last few weeks, we've been pretty crammed, so I'm just gonna put a few in this time round because I do love reading the comments and I do try and comment on a lot of those. Been away recently with, uh, with work quite a lot, so haven't been quite as good, but promise you I'll be back on the case after this very show. So first one is from Diluted UK. Can you guys do a video just about tire inserts? Everyone seems to have Procore, Cushcore, Huck Norris, etc., but I haven't seen anyone compare how they all feel or the weight that they add. By putting an insert in, do you negate the weight saving you get with tubeless, basically? Um, no, this is an interesting point. I was actually chatting to Neil about this earlier today, and we do want to do something on tire protection, puncture protection, puncture prevention, all of that sort of stuff, and look at the different rim strips. How hard can you ride them? What sort of damage do they do to your rims and tires in certain situations? So we're definitely gonna do a bit of a techie feature and get hold of all of these different systems on the market. Now, I've also got a couple of ideas of my own to make some homemade options to chuck in there too. So more on that very soon, I hope. Next up is from Jack Beams. Can bike build be longer, please? Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I've been pushed to the limit the last few weeks, been out the country a lot filming, so just haven't been up to speed a bit. I promise there's gonna be a lot more stuff to talk about in bike builds soon. I'm gonna go mad on the ordering and make sure all this stuff comes in. There is one more thing I need you guys to help me with before I get the rest of the stuff in, and we'll tackle this in bike build later on. Next up is from Nildia1986. That dual shock bike looked like an interesting piece of extinct tech. Maybe you could do an episode dedicated to its history. Dual shocks, application, target market, what did they intend to do? Were they abandoned? Uh, why were they abandoned? Is it still an exotic design that uses them? I'm just curious. Yeah, well actually, we're definitely gonna look into some of the more peculiar suspension designs out there because there are so many out there. So come back to us on that one because we will be doing a suspension special. Okay, and the last comment this week is from Paul Robertson. 
More on grips, please. Lock-ons are great, but for me, ODI Tomek mushroom grips have always been the best for two reasons, the mushroom soft touch and the rounded end. So those Tomek ones, if I'm right, I'm thinking that they were like a waffle pattern on the underneath, a mushroom on the top. So the waffle for grip on the fingers and a mushroom for the cushioning, I guess. Um, why don't more grips have rounded ends? Don't know, that's a good question. I'd take a guess at the fact that they might not be as durable when you're falling off the bike and they're repeatedly bashing on the floor, they probably peel open. Um, but I'm gonna ask some grip manufacturers those sort of questions. Um, interesting to see that you like the mushroom grip, so they were always a big favorite of mine. I also really liked the mushroom grip pattern as well, but I did find, because I like to ride without gloves as much as possible, that if you get sweaty hands or wet hands, you slide around on them like crazy. So that waffle pattern on the underneath of some, I might be wrong with the Tomek ones that you just said, um, works really well, just an extra solution to the hand grip thing. Uh, we can look at grips more soon. <laughs> Okay, one of my favorite sections of the show, this is Bike Cave. It's where we get to check out where you store your bikes, where you fet all your bikes, all that sort of stuff. Could be the back of a van, could be a pickup truck, could be a house, could be a dedicated shed. Whatever it is, we wanna see them. Get your Bike Cave entries into us at the email address on the screen. Use the hashtag Bike Cave in the subject header there just so we can see it nice and easy and try and get you in next week's show. First up this week is from Jeff in Michigan, USA. Nearly finished my bike cave after two years worth of work. Best way to keep your gear in good shape, build a space you actually want to hang out in. Uh, always need to have a bit of bourbon on the work, workbench for the stuff and projects. Nice, yeah. Um, all right, let's have a look at your, oh, wait. Hey. hey, this is really nice. My sort of bike cave, I'm really into this, Jeff. Nice, oh, I like the fact you've got the rubber inserts on the drawers to stop, stop your tools rattling around there. That's a nice touch. Yeah, and I like in your, uh, Traver Traverse City whiskey on the counter there. Looks very really tasty that. No glasses. You drink straight out of the bottle? By the way, I guess it's uh, pretty good. Nice selection of bikes and stuff in there as well. What's that, Scott Genius, uh, Kona, something or other. I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, you said it's Kona 5.0. My bad. A live in there and a special stereo. Cool, nice stuff, Jeff. Thanks for sending that one in. Um, next up on the list is from Antoine C. Hi Doddy, this is my brother and I's little workspace. Hope you like it. We pretty much got all the tools we need and we do the maintenance by ourselves. We changed my brother's espresso um, ex Brenzo drivetrain from 2x10 to a 1x11 Shimano SLX. Nice. Oh, PS, the rim on the wall was given to us and signed by Danny Hart at Mont Saint Anne. Oh, what a legend. So I'm guessing he trashed that rim in a run, and just gave you a spare or something like that. Nice work. Oh, nice intense. Always like a bit of black and red intense. I've not seen those espresso bikes before. That's why I stumbled back then, because I wasn't sure about what it was. Looks quite good, looks like a neat looking bike, that. Or oh, good man, you've got your WD-40 on the bench. I like the fact that the uh, rim does take pride of your sort of, your panel behind there. That's quite a cool solution to the lighting as well, with the shelf above the bench. That's good, that. Hmm, I might have to borrow that idea into that. Okay, next up is from Todd Esther. Doddy, I thought I'd send you some pictures of a new twist on the bike cave. You can't always predict where you need some maintenance or to fix a flat. So when I built my bike clamp out of woodwork working clamp and some pipe, I made it so I could clamp it in my bench vice in the garage or, as you see, stick it in the stake pocket of my truck. Oh man, this is super cool. So this is basically like a mobile workshop and bike cave in one. So it's in the back of your pickup truck. Oh, nice Linsky tire there as well. And you're obviously using that bike for what looks like sort of gravel set of wheels and fat wheels or bigger wheels anyway. Toolbox, nice storage on the side of the truck there as well. Love the truck, by the way, that is mega. I have to shout to Blake, he'll be well impressed. In fact, I reckon Blake might be able to do something like this with his Jeff the Jeep that he's got. I really like the way you've done that. That is a brilliant idea. That is neat. Nice work, Todd. Thank you for sending that one in. Definitely approve of that. Uh, last one this week is from Rob Klein. Hope you enjoy my recently finished bike cave in the basement of my new house. My wife and I live in, a, in the USA, Indianapolis, Indiana. I watch all the GMBM videos in here and it's a nice place to hang out with friends to work on bikes. The bar has a fridge for cold drinks and a sink to wash dirty hands. Oh man, I could live in this room. Sofa, armchair, nice bike cart in there. Oh man, this kind of reminds me of the sort of look I'm going for with my own one actually because I've got kitchen units in mine with solid oak worktop. I've got a washing machine in my workshop. I've got like a sink in there for the same thing. Come in for riding, be able to clean up and stuff. 
not have to go into the house and sort of bother my wife. Oh man, I'm gonna have to get a TV in mine. I wasn't planning on that, but it looks really good in there. Loving your park sort of tool board. Very similar to our one actually, with a big branded park logo on there, work stand. That's the pro work stand as well, just like ours. They're really heavy duty those. I like your carpet sort of rug there for catching oil and working on. That's quite good. Is that like rubber based with carpet on the top? It looks like it is. I like the Orient Cycles poster as well. That's very cool and very retro. It's almost the exact vibe I'm going for in my place. Although mine is going to have a hell of a lot more bikes. You've got your lovely bike. What was that? Oh, no, that's a Soma. You've got your Soma on display there in the rack at the moment. But mine's probably going to have about 15 bikes wedged in it somehow. Not looking forward to having to get them in. Nice. Sorry, enough waffling for me about bike case. I really do love seeing your bike case, so continue to send them in, and we'll see you next week. Okay, now it's time for Rewind. This is our retro section of the GMBN Tech Show. So we want you to send in anything retro you've got, old pictures of yourselves at races, any old crazy catalog bikes you've seen from over the years. Maybe you've got a retro bike. By retro, I think we have to start being firm about this. It should be anything, let's just say, the other side of year 2000 to sort of qualify. So anything from 1999 backwards, I reckon that does class. Unless, of course, you've got a modern retro bike like the Fat Chance we checked out at Sea Otter. I think that kind of is a good way of bringing in some modern tech into the retro section. And of course, if there's anything that you guys want to know about, any stuff that's been developed from over the years, if you want to know where it came from, just ask and we'll try and tell you the stories. Chances are I've probably got some of that stuff lying around. I've got a lot of bike related stuff. Some people might call it junk. To me, it's my treasure. Love that stuff. Anyway, so this week we've got a few and we've got a little special one on the end. So first up is from Paddle Peddler, uh, Sean O'Connor I've got in brackets here. Um, don't know which you like to go by, Sean, but um, I'll call you Paddle Peddler. How's that? So here's my Rewind Retro Mod for you to look at. Hope it makes the show, even though it isn't as sexy as some of the others I've seen you talk about. I rescued this bike just in time from a friend who's in the middle of stripping it down to change it into a commuter. Ugh! It's a 1998 Specialized Stump Jumper S-Works M2 Team. My God, right, so this is a picture now on screen of what the bike used to look like. That is, I always remember, a snowflake rear wheel though. My God, whoever rode that was crazy to have that on the back. Armagumma tires. Uh, the Specialized Specific Judy Fork on there with the carbon lowers, XTR transmission. Man, that is really nice. And I love that cover of uh, MTB Pro. I've got that. In fact, I've got most of the MTB Pros. Of course, I used to work for MBUK, and that was one of the sister magazines for that. Um, really cool to see. And, of course, Jason McCroy on the cover on one of those bikes too. This bike was 100% original with less than 200 hours total ride time on it before it was dismantled. I wish I could have got it before the paint and stickers were pulled off. Here's what it looked like after it was repainted with most original parts. Uh, and this is what it looks like now. Oh, nice. So you've actually rebuilt this bike, got it going again, under 20 pounds. Man, that's, that is light, isn't it? Well into that. Hey, good work. You've done a lot with this. You've definitely rescued it. You didn't want to turn it into a commuter. Definitely keeping it real. It looks quite modern, actually. Doesn't actually look like it's a 1998 bike. I think you've done a great job with that. Nice work. Thank you very much, Paddle Peddler, Sean O'Connor, for sending that one in. Next up is from Psychedelic Visions. And man, that is a psychedelic bike for sure. My dad's old Orbit Frontier he's had in the garage for years and years. Uh, Shimano Exage 300LX group set. Magura HS11 brakes, rock ring, Onza bar ends, Regida rims, Campionola hubs, a oh, classic old rear derailleur protector there made of good old stainless steel. Those rock rings, they were used by Hans Ray. He sort of pioneered those. He used to use them all the time on his trail bikes so he could do trials maneuvers and not damage the chain rings. We'd bash them into stuff. I mean, looking at it now, they're quite excessive, the size of them. I, tell you, I love the paint finish on that. It's almost got like a paint flicker to it. I had a friend who had an Orbit Frontier actually, but his was red and white, but I remember it had that paint flicker on there as well. Man, look at the colour of that thing. Pink, orange and luminous yellow all at once. Got it all going on there. Hey, that's a really cool old bike. I'd still ride that now as a ride to work on sort of bike. Thanks for sending that one in, that's good to see. Now the last one is a bit of a special one. So 
I used to do a lot of racing when I was young, and this is a picture of me when I'm guessing about 1993, so I would have been about 14 years old at the time. I'm in a race, a place called Eastway in London. It was nicknamed Beastway. And unfortunately, that venue doesn't actually exist anymore because it was turned into the Olympic Park for the London 2012 Games. So it's really cool to actually see this picture. Now, my sister found this picture along with some other mountain biking gold. So hopefully, I'm going to get to see all that stuff soon. But in this particular one, I'm riding an old Saracen Killy Pro Elite. That's made of Tange Prestige tubing. That's Saracen the first time round, not like the Saracen today that are quite high tech and made of carbon and stuff. And now I can see on there I've got Dave's chain device, that's that chain guide on the uh, chain today. Richie Logic cranks, Quadra 20 forks with a blue Odyssey brake booster on there. Tioga Psycho tyres, Dior DX transmission, Richie Logic brakes. And you might notice as well my classic one finger braking with no gloves, always been doing that. Um, no excuse for the karate sport like we're short, so we're both tight and incredibly short, but that's what the look was back then. But look at my feet, I've got Nike Puba shoes on. Now those shoes were really, really cool. John Tomac used to ride in those all the time. I clearly wanted to be John Tomac growing up. That's why I had the uh, Troy Lee Designs helmet peak on there. Long before Troy Lee made helmets or anyone had a helmet with a peak on, used to buy those and stick them on to try and look like a BMX or a motocross rider. But there you go, that was me 25 years ago. I can't believe it. I've been doing this thing a long time. I flipping love it. Keep sending your retro stuff in. Love to see that stuff, especially if there's a bit of a story to it, like I've just told you. Love it. Okay, now it is time for top mods. This is where you guys modify bits of your bike, whether it's some new handlebar grips, a full custom respray you've done yourself. Doesn't matter what it is, how big, how small, how expensive, how cheap. It could be a free upgrade that you've done. Whatever it is, send them in. We love seeing how you guys personalize your bikes. Send them into the usual email address that was at the show at the beginning on the bottom of the screen there and use the hashtag top mods. First up this week is from George French. Hi Doddy, I thought I'd share my new 3D printed dropper release lever. I wasn't happy with the position of the stock KS1 above the bar, so I printed this out of carbon reinforced nylon. Works great. Oh mate, I'll tell you what, that is, that is trick as anything. So you've got your own 3D printer there as well. That's an expensive bit of kit, isn't it? That looks so good. That's a really good design. I love the way that you can see the cable wrap around there cleanly. Nice and simple with a pivot on it. Fits around the bar. I'll tell you what, 10 out of 10 for that. That is a really, really cool mod. I'm so into people making stuff themselves, bit of DIY. That is wicked. I also liked another little mod you've done there is put a section of Odyssey grip in between the gap between your brake lever and the grip, to, presumably to stop your other grip moving in there, just to sort of space it out. I remember doing that when I was a bit younger as well. Very cool. Thanks, George. That's a really, really cool top mod. Okay, so this one's a bit random. I'm totally going to go with it though, because it's really, really quite cool actually. It's not that mountain bike related, but I think you're, you guys are going to like this. So this is from Harry Paul. Hi Doddy, really enjoying the tech show. Um, your no BS explanations are ace. Well, cool, thank you, that's what I'm here for. So, uh, appreciate that. Um, I dug out a few goodies from my archives of many bikes I've customized, customized, modified and bodged over the years. Having built over 100 project bikes, man, that's a lot of bikes. Um, I'm just gonna show you the pictures here because this is better. So, look at these, right? So this is the Copper Chopper. Custom cruiser based on a steel BSA ladies frame, inverted, with 20 inch by 4.25 rear tire on there and wheel from motocross bikes and stuff basically. Man, these, I don't know what you call these things, like uh, rat bikes, they're like, I've never seen anything like them. These are unreal. I totally think me, Neil, Blake and Martin, everyone, we should all be building stuff like this for a laugh, for some sort of challenge. These look amazing. Motorbike rear, front and rear wheels on this particular one. Oh, I love to see that you've got an old restored rally chopper. I've got an old rally chopper, but unfortunately the one I've got was a little later now. It doesn't have the old classic suicide shifter on the top tube there. Is that a pair of forks inside a pair of forks? Is that even rideable? Are you sure about this? That seems insane, mate. Hey, I'd love to see some of these things in the flesh and have a go on them. If I'm ever up your way, Harry Paul, I'll definitely hook up with you to check some of these things out. So you're from Ayrshire in Scotland, so maybe one day I'll come and have a look. Um, and yeah, like you say, keep up the good work and whatever you ride, if it raises a smile, you're doing it right. Yeah, here, here to that. Thank you very much, Harry Paul, for sending those in and thank you for following what we do here. 
Okay, it's time for tech of the week, and now there are a whole bunch of cool tech things floating around. You might have spotted in the background here. I've got some of that brawn stuff. I'm going to be doing some cool hacks with that soon. More info on it. Also, just been sent one of these Rilo cameras to have a play with. So keep an eye out on our Instagram feeds and on our Facebook pages for interesting videos that we're going to be out and about doing just to experiment with that 360 technology. But this week, I actually want to throw you back to Sea Otter for something that I haven't shown you guys yet. Now, you may have seen it already, but this is my proper detailed look at the Bold Unplugged. This is a really cool carbon fiber Endura bike from Switzerland with a hidden shock in there. Check this out. So one of the coolest things about Sea Otter as a bike festival is you get to see some really weird and random prototype stuff floating around, just like this. So this is from Bold Cycles. This is a company that hails from Switzerland and it's called the Unplugged. This bike is a prototype at the moment, but it will be available later this year. Now you can run 27 and a half or 29 inch wheels on it. And it's got some really cool innovations on this bike that you won't see on many other mountain bikes. Now it'll house a shock with a piggyback on this particular one. It's got a Monarch shock and Ebo rock shocks with that piggyback on there and all the adjustment that you need. Really easy access and it's obviously it's protected inside the frame there as well. Very unique system that we've only seen on bold cycles. Now the next up, you might notice it's got a fully integrated KS dropper post that merges really beautifully straight into the frame. Now there are some other similar systems available on the market like the 8 pin system that you've seen out there on the Lightfield bikes. But the beauty of this is that you can run this or you can run a regular dropper post on the bike. So it's up to you as a consumer which one you want to run. Personally, I think it looks stunning with this system on here. It's like a futuristic bike. It's got all that technology that we really like to see. Now, of course, the frame is made from carbon fiber. The layup on this scene just looks absolutely stunning, but there's a couple more really cool things on it. So firstly, up front, you've got an adjustable head angle and it's got a very unique system that's built into the frame. That by changing the cups into the frame, you can change it by up to two degrees. So you're talking from the region of 63 to 65 degree head angle availability there. Really good to have that built in as standard on a frame. Now also, there's the ability to run different size wheels on here, 27 and a half and 29 inch wheels. And also you can adjust the bottom bracket height by up to 20 millimeters. So that's a huge amount. And you can also grow that back end to compensate and add in those different wheel sizes. And that's achieved by these really cool chips out on the back wheels. There's four different settings for those. And that is down here in effectively what would be this, the horse link location on the chain stay there. By changing those, by flipping them around, you get that 20 mil adjustment, and you get a huge variety of chain stay adjustment. And still, even with a huge 2.5 tyre and a 29, there's still plenty of clearance. So from my point of view, with UK conditions, that's a green light. Really, really cool bit of kit. Okay, so now it is time for an update on the bike build. Okay, I'm really, really sorry guys that it's been taking so long. I've literally been away on trips more than I've actually been here writing scripts and presenting them for you guys. So I'm gonna step on it a bit. So obviously the frame is still hung up behind me on the wall. I don't want it up there for long. I wanna get this thing in a work stand and start building it. Now I'm not gonna talk about these too much yet, but I have a set of custom built X-Fusion forks here. This is the metric. I'll explain more about this next week. So it's a pretty special fork, this one, I think. And it's quite unique as well. But the reason I need your help, but the reason I wanna talk about this next week is because I actually need help in sourcing some wheels to go on this bike. Because out back, the bike is boost, 148. Up front, that fork is 20 mil, none boost. So I need to source some wheels for the bike. There's plenty of options, you could build some wheels up, but of course don't forget that my aim is to try and get this as close or less than the cheapest build of the Santa Cruz Nomad alloy, which is about three and a half grand. So preferably I wanna get some pre-built wheels, but I may end up having to lace in a 20 mil front hub just to make that work. Have a look around and see what sort of suggestions you guys have. Currently I'm looking at things like uh, the race face wheels because I've ridden the race face arc rims in the past they're so strong and they're available in different widths as well which is quite cool you know super heavy duty 30 mil wide type rims they've got pretty reliable hubs on them as well and it's going to be easy enough because they're regular spoked ones to chop a hub out now I'd love to put something on like Mavic but I'm not going to have that luxury with a hub but sometimes you can get convertible front hubs so any thoughts on that let us know in the comments 
and then we can really step on it, get those wheels in and get this thing together. There you go, there's another weekly GMBN Tech show in the bag. Now just before we go, I just wanna throw you guys over to our very own store where you can support us by getting the merchandise, the t-shirts that we wear when we're out presenting, and some really useful stuff as well, like the mechanics apron, always useful. We've got a nice deep pocket on the front for chucking your tools in when you're working on the bike. If you guys can support us and rep the brand, we'd love to see shots of you guys wearing that kit and we'll show them on the show and on our Facebook and Instagram pages. For a couple more great videos on the tech channel, click down here if you wanna see the weird and wonderful stuff from Sea Otter. That will also take you through to the other Sea Otter videos of all the tech that we spotted out there, just in case you guys haven't caught up on those yet. And click up here for a good maintenance video. Now it's a pedal overhaul how to basically, but I'm looking at two particular types of pedal, looking at a Shimano pedal and a Crank Brothers pedal because they're pretty much the most common out there on the market. And that's just how to get your pedals in tip top condition and staying out on the trail. So hopefully there'll be good videos for you guys. Please make sure you click on that globe to subscribe if you've not done it already and share the channel around, tell your friends about us. We want more people to come and join us so we can make more great content for you guys. And if you love this show, give us a thumbs up.